Welcome to uh, our Saturday morning uh, brief little tech study preparing us for uh, hearing the preaching text on worship in worship on Sunday morning. We're in Luke 24, verses 13 to 35, and I would encourage you to read it for yourself. Uh, even before, I start, even before you start listening to what I have to say. Uh, but just a couple of things, uh, just as a reminder, this text is a continuation of what happens on Easter Sunday. It's kind of important to understand and know that. And remember, uh, last week we heard how the women, with their prepared spices to anoint a dead body, the body of Jesus, show up at the tomb on the first day of the week at early dawn, they find the stone rolled away. They don't find the body. Luke says they were perplexed about this. And as they were perplexed about this, two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women are terrified. The men say, why do you look for the living among the dead? That wonderful question that gets asked on Easter Sunday morning. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. And then they say, remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day, rise again. They remember his words. They go back to where the disciples are. They tell them what has happened. They don't believe the women. They call it an idle tale. Peter goes to the tomb by himself. He looks in, doesn't find the body. He goes home amazed at what had happened. And then we find ourselves at verse 13. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking, talking with each other about all these things that had happened. What I love about this story is the men are walking, and they're talking, and they're discussing, and they're processing everything that had happened in these days. And as they're walking along, and we can all relate to this, right? You've all been on a walk with a spouse, a friend. It's a time to discuss, to process. Um, you get into a wonderful rhythm of walking and discussing. And um, it's not only a fun thing to do, but it's a healthy thing to do. It's a cool thing to do. And that's what's happening here uh, on the walk to Emmaus. And then all of a sudden, Jesus shows up. They don't recognize him. And he says to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? And I love what, the way Luke tells the story. He, he says, they stood still looking sad. It's like they're still at the cross. Um, they're still not sure what has happened. They're still processing their feelings, trying to figure it all out. And it's a great question he asks. Jesus always asks really good questions. What are you discussing with each other as you walk along? And then one of them named Cleopas answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? It's like they're incredulous that there's somebody who isn't aware of what has happened. And they still don't know it's Jesus at this point in time in the story. And he innocently, he innocently asks them, what things? And they've replied the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in word and deed before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. So here again, in the second, for the second time in chapter 24, we hear that central message about the death and the crucifixion of Jesus as the Messiah. It is central to the story. And then they say in verse 21, but we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. And that's kind of a political statement. They had hoped that he would be the one to throw off the, the yoke of Roman oppression. They didn't fully yet understand that Jesus as the Messiah was going to usher in a new kind of kingdom, a new kind of reality. And then they relate to this stranger that they're walking with, uh, uh, the story of the women who'd gone to the tomb. They astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And some of them had gone to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said. So you can see and hear how the story is evolving with these men or these people, um, Cleopas and whoever else was with him, 
and the rest of them what had happened on that day, on the first day of the week, on that first Easter. The processing of the information, trying to understand what had happened for themselves and for the group. And then in verse 25, Jesus says to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And then beginning with Moses and the prophets, he interprets to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. The men get a Bible study from Jesus, even though they don't know it's Jesus. Think about what that must have been like for them. Oh, how foolish and slow of heart you are to believe all that the prophets have declared. And then what's really, I think, interesting, as they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on, but they urged him strongly saying, stay with us because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. And so Cleopas and his walking partner extend the gift of hospitality to this stranger who's just given them this amazing Bible study and they invite him to stay with them. They invite him to stay with us for it is almost evening and the day is over. And Jesus agrees. So they went in to stay with them and when he was at the table with them, he broke the bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And then in the breaking of the bread, in the blessing of the bread, and those words should sound familiar to you from the night in which Jesus was betrayed. When he takes bread, he breaks it, he blesses it, he gives it to them and says, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remember, remembrance of me. And these two walkers, when he's at the table with them and he takes the bread and he blesses it and he breaks it and he gives it to them, that's when their eyes are opened and they see Two ways in which Jesus is revealed to us as the resurrected one. In the scriptures, in the word, as this word is opened up to us, as we read it, as we hear it, as we listen to it, our hearts burn. We see Christ in here and he is revealed to us in the fullness of his glory. And the second is in the breaking of the bread. In what we call the Lord's Supper, the communion as Lutheran Christians that Christ is revealed to us. And they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening up the scriptures to us. And that's what the resurrected Christ does as we read and listen to this word. He opens it up for us and to us. And he comes into our lives through this word through the breaking of the bread and the drinking of the wine, we receive Christ into us, literally. He dwells in us and we begin to live the risen life. And that's what happens here in Luke 24. All these first followers, not only the disciples, but everybody else who was with them, the women and everyone else, they begin living into that risen life, that new reality that comes through the cross, through the suffering and death of Jesus. Read the rest of Luke 24 as well. Just go ahead and read to the end of the chapter because there's some other cool stuff. And then next week, Luke, who, al who also is the author of the book of Acts, the same person who wrote Luke, wrote Acts. We begin to see how the this, this story goes forward uh, from that day of resurrection into that new reality of the risen life. Thanks for tuning in. I uh, look forward to seeing you in worship on Sunday morning and uh, dwell in the word, listen to it, hear it, and see the risen Christ as the scriptures are opened to you. Thanks for being part of this. Mm -hmm.